The constant flow of water from these glaciers is the source of life for our small nation of Bhutan. We call it white gold and it is key to our development, providing irrigation and hydroelectricity. But our beloved waters also pose a serious threat to our villages and our economy. We are racing against time to prevent what we call a silent tsunami. At promptly 7.45 each day, 250 workers begin a one and a half hour journey from the Alunana base camp to Lake Thorthormi. At 4,200 meters, the air is too thin and the site too remote for modern machinery. So the workers use sledgehammers, shovels and burlap bags to avoid an impending disaster. We are fighting against nature. It is a matter of time if you do not carry out this type of mitigation measure. Exactly like tsunami, you know, like you cannot predict. It's now late September and the workers have been clearing boulders and rocks for the past two months so they can dig a channel they hope will prevent small glacier lakes from growing into one massive lake that can burst, causing a catastrophic glacial outburst flood, or GLOF. Ice starts to melt, and then the water level rises. A GLOF uh, could originate from this lake as early as 2010. This is the silent tsunami that can obliterate downstream valleys, like the one in 1994 that killed 24 people destroyed villages and livestock and caused millions of dollars of damage. So there is an urgent need to carry out mitigation work in, in this lake bottom. So basically we are releasing the pressure. What we'll do is we'll try to first of all remove all the soils and then now we are, we are going to let out the water from there. The water is freezing, it's all ice water so it's a really a challenging job. Countries like Bhutan we are suffering not because of our fault. Such events like GLOF and glacier recession, all this because of climate change activities. I firmly believe in that one, that theory. And the climate change, when you talk about climate change, you are talking about the rise in temperature. Bhutan, we don't contribute anything to climate change. In fact, we are carbon sinkers, but still then we are suffering the, the impact of climate change. Near the border with Tibet, Lake Thorthormi is now just a moonscape of rocks, sand and mud. By contrast, the adjacent Lake Rafstring is a fully formed lake, Asia blue and 100 meters deep. Separating the two, is an unstable 35-meter moraine wall of rocks from mud. The majority of the water in these lakes is trapped, creating an escalating pressure as the lake levels rise. If Lake Tortormi ultimately overtops the moraine wall, one super glacier lake with nearly 53 million cubic meters could eventually burst, causing a flood three times the size of the 1994 disaster. This was uh, very on the right time that we got the Jeff funding, because if we wait for another couple of years, probably then the lakes would have been developed and then we could not do anything. Right now, we have still time. We can afford to do our work properly without you know, very little risk to the people working up there. And should you wait for a couple of years, then, then the risk is going to multiply because once the lake is being formed into a huge lake, then I think uh, anything we try to do is not going to be very safe. 
Daochu Dukpa is a senior geologist with the Bhutan government and leading the team to prevent such a catastrophe. As with his other colleagues and workers already at Lunana, he must make an exhausting nine-day trek over a 5,200-meter pass to join them. The team of geologists, glaciologists and engineers is part of a combined international effort with major support provided by the Global Environment Facility. The men and women working here have come from all over the kingdom to one of the most remote work sites on the planet. This woman recently lost her husband and traveled from Western Bhutan to earn about $10 per day, five times the average national wage. <laughs> she is one of nearly 250 Bhutanese nationals who have set up temporary homesteads for the short three-month period when work can be done at the 4,200-meter site. Shyam Dorji Doya is among the workers. He too trekked 14 days in the hopes of making enough money to start a new life. To implement such kind of project in such kind of places like Lonana at this altitude is very, very difficult. The remote and rugged location challenged project planners to find the best way to get the work done while supplying the workforce with food, fuel and tools. Although helicopters were considered to bring the 60 tons of supplies to the site, everything from shovels and propane to rice and potatoes, planners ultimately used skilled local horse and yak herders for the substantial economic and social benefits from using local providers. The result was that more than 150,000 US dollars were distributed to local herdsmen and women. By mid-October, the site will be closed and people will begin the long trek back to their villages. The money they will earn during the three-year project will buy food, shelter and education for their kids. And it may also buy something else for the country. Precious time to prevent the silent tsunami. A very important project for Bhutan, not only for our department, is for the country. If my project succeeds, uh, the life of humans are saved, so that is a pride which I have. If they fail, their country, whose forests absorb more carbon than the country emits, could end up paying the highest price. With hundreds of similar glaciers in the Himalayas and around the world, the work in Bhutan is also being watched carefully by scientists and governments. In the Himalayas, I think uh, this is the first time that uh, such work is being done and then uh, quite a lot of the countries like uh, Nepal, Pakistan, India, I think, uh, and then the Hindu Kush areas, they are all looking forward and observing us how we are doing and how successful we will be. For the next two summers, the Lunana Bell will call workers to begin their daily commute to one of the most difficult climate changing adaptation projects. The bell is also a call to action for Bhutan and a signal to a climate changing world of what can be accomplished when international support meets a committed nation.